uh, section 4.23, the field inside a dielectric from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, uh, second edition. This is Jonathan Gardner. Um, if you appreciate what I'm doing, be sure to like and share the video. Uh, comments can go in our video response or in the comments below. And if I go too quickly, you can just rewind and play it again. So this section deals with the difference between pure dipoles and physical dipoles. And if you remember, in, in the long run, when you're far away from a physical dipole, it behaves exactly like a pure dipole. But when you get close to it, the field is a lot different. And if you, th if you think about, like if you shrunk yourself to atomic size and we're looking inside any material, if there's polarization going on, then the electric field varies wildly depending on whether you're close to a negative charge or a positive charge. Um, but um, just like the arguments for density, when we know matter is composed of point particles, um, we can still treat uh, materials as if they're made out of you know uniformly dense material that that has like a in the infinitesimal limit has a uniform density. So here, I'm going to explain to you why that's a perfectly good assumption for um, fields inside of a dielectric that even though the actual field inside the dielectric at any given point could vary wildly if we're dealing with you know averages of large enough spaces it's very consistent it can be very consistent so the argument basically goes like this so let's take any material which has some polarization going on and we're going to look at point P which is right there and if we blow up point P uh, we're not going to look at a, an actual point here. We're going to actually look at a small sphere. Okay, radius r, centered at point p. Okay, and the the electric field at the point p is actually going to be the average of the electric field of everything going on the outside of point p. So all this stuff out here, plus the electric field of the stuff going on in the inside. So let me write that out there. So the electric field at point P is going to be the electric field due to the outside stuff at point P plus the electric field due to the inside stuff at point P. Okay, so let's calculate the electric field due to the outside. Well, the potential due to all the stuff going on the outside can be written out as one over four pi epsilon naught times the integral of all the stuff on the outside this including this point or the sphere on the inside of the polarization of that material dot r hat over r squared d tau okay so that's the outside and this integral includes everything but this sphere okay so that only gives us a part of the electric field now we need to think about what's going on due to the stuff on the inside of the sphere um, well if you did problem 3.41 if you didn't, go back and do it. It's a, it's a good one to, to fight with for a while. You would have found out that the average of the fields, so if you take this, this volume and you average the field over that volume, okay, and you take any point configuration, charge configuration inside the sphere, okay, then the average um, of the inside average is going to be equal to uh, negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the dipole moment of each given particle which is just the distance from the center there to the particle let me draw out what that would, that would look like so if we had a single particle here then the dipole moment would be this vector times the charge of that particle uh, multiple particles we just add them up and we get the total dipole moment because we're just adding those dipole moments together over the r cubed okay, of that the, the sphere we're looking at Okay, so this is the, the inside is basically just the total dipole moment times this stuff, okay? Which uh, we can rewrite the total dipole moment as that's just gonna be the polarization of that material, big P, times the volume, right? So the total dipole moment is the polarization times the volume because polarization is the dipole moment per unit volume okay so plugging that in the electric field the average electric field on the inside is equal to negative 1 over 3 epsilon naught times the polarization of the stuff within the sphere now the polarization 
is it's an average, okay? Um, because this is the total dipole moment. We divide that by the total volume and we get the polarization. It's constant. The, the polarization does not change within that sphere. And so we found that the potential due on the inside of a sphere of constant polarization is equal to, so the potential on the inside is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral of the polarization dot r hat over uh, r squared d tau. Um, I'm sorry, I feel foolish. Um, that's just over the sphere, so inside. This is the inside integral. Okay, now when you take this plus that, this is everything outside, this is everything inside, you see that these equations, they just merge together perfectly. Okay, and so you're left with the result that the potential for any given point, if you're averaging over these spheres, will give you, will be determined by this formula of the polarization dot r hat over r squared d tau. Okay? Um, so, the, 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 the thinking here is kind of subtle, but the two key parts. The, the first key part is finding the average of the electric field. Okay? And it happens to be that the dipole moment, the sum of the dipole moments of all the particles in there, it doesn't matter where they are, um, whatever their dipole moment is, you add it up and you get the average of the electric field at the center of the point, which is what we're interested in. And the second key point is that the potential on the inside um, and the potential on the outside, so the potential on the outside is determined by what's going on on the outside. And then the only thing we're missing is a potential on the inside. Well, the potential on the inside looks exactly like the potential on the outside, um, except for the dipole moment at that point, right? The average dipole moment at that point, I guess, is the, or the, the, the density of, of the dipole moments at that point. And so the, the potential at any given point, even though that point may be close to some particles that have, you know, if you, if you get in there with your super duper microscope, you'll see the electric field very wildly, but the average, the, the average of these things are very, very consistent. And um, you can do the same argument for cubes or loops, ellipsoids. I'm not going to do it. Um, if you do do it, I'd like to see how you do it. But um, the end result is that even though we're dealing with real matter, we can, this, this polarization is actually very, very useful and very, very descriptive of what's really going on. I hope that helps. Um, let me know in the comments if you're still confused. Um, the, the reasoning is kind of subtle. So anyway, thanks and bye.